is Kevin, and I am here in another installment of Astromex Tech Corner. I'm here with my friend RJ, and I'm going to be teaching him Hello. and all you viewers out there about a program that I've made called the Menu System. Let's jump right in. Here we are. So I, I already have a simplified and commented version of my program, so I'm going to be going into all the detail that I can. We're going to start this off by learning about what's called a file access block. You can find these in a the little four red square advanced tab under the complete palette. It's the little file or the paper inside the file folder. What these allow you to do is they let you write to files on the NXT and lets you read them back again. They aren't deleted to the end of a program like variables, which is the next thing, under the little orange plus sign, the little briefcase, not the briefcase with the lock on it, but just the briefcase. This is called a variable. It's exactly the same as a file, except it's deleted at the end of the program. The reason we use these is so that some of the data connections work correctly. So, like I said, we're going to be splitting these uh, up into different chunks. And so this is our first chunk. We take the file, or the value of our file, I named it menu val, exactly what it does, it's the value of the menu, and turned it into menu val, the exact same name and a variable. How nice. Then we have our first screen update. Well, this is actually much more complex. If we pull it up, we read from our same variable that we just had for the file connections to work right, and then we have our various display blocks to set up the screen, did not mean to do that, to set up the screen, and then we have a little arrow to show which program we're on. That's whenever, yes? Excuse me, can you go back to that for a second? Yes. Well, when you see that, what is this little tabs menu thing? Well, what did, in, in case you didn't called? catch it, I was probably too quick, this is a switch. In order, I switched it over to value and number, and I have to take it off of flat view to have more than two sections, and then it turns into tabs. So this has five different possibilities for the five different values of the number. Okay. So that's all, whenever you see this screen update block, that's what it does. Then we have our loop here. This is a more complex loop than the normal average loopy loop. We have it's still set to sensor like it defaults to, but we have it set to NXT buttons. On this one, there is an option for NXT buttons. We then have our enter button selected, and it's bumped, which means it has to go both down and up, or up and down, for it to count, for it to end the loop. So, basically, I'm going to walk you through. So, it gets into the loop. It says, is the left button, which is the go back one program button, pushed. If it, is, if it isn't, it does nothing. Second time, or now, is the right button going forward one program button pushed? It isn't, so we end the loop. The other button isn't pushed, so we loop back to the beginning. We do the scan. Oh, here, the back, bucket, bu back button is pushed. So, let's go into our first back, back program one. It does a funky thing with the wiring because it's in a switch. So, here we have a read from our variable, which at this point hasn't changed yet. We say, if we were to <coughs> subtract one, we aren't actually subtracting one yet. If we were to subtract one, would it be less than one, meaning zero? If it, this is called a value. This is the yes, no, also known as a Boolean. It's one and a zero, a yes or a no. If it is, we do nothing. It can't go back a program. If it isn't, meaning it's two or higher, it take it does the same calculation again, except this time it writes it back to the variable. So this time it actually changed the variable. These little wire thingies or data connections, they allow numbers from this thing to be go traveled into this thing, traveled into this thing, and then instead of a number this time, it's a yes or a no, which is the output of this block. So, let's just carry back on to our original program. Oh, now we have the same screen update that we had earlier, just updates the screen again. We don't want to, ha to have it update the screen too many times because that lags out the NXT. Oh, now the forward button has also been pushed. 
So we go into our forward program. We do a similar calculation where we read, we say, if we were to add one, would it be greater than five? In our run, we have five runs, so you, you actually have to change around a couple of the numbers if you have more or less than five. Yeah, mine just happens to have five. Then we have our value switch again. If it is, meaning it's already at five, we do nothing. If it isn't, then we read from our variable, we add one, we write it. Basically saying, this calculation, we finish it out and we actually change the variable to that value. Then we update our screen again. A second update screen block. Oh look, now the enter button's pushed, so we exit our loop. Now we're moving on to the big and scary end of the program. So it's so scary, I'm going to have to break it down into chunks. So we're going to drag out this, so this first chunk are these two blocks. We're going to drag these chunk, this chunk out of there. I'm going to put them back. I'm going to drag this chunk out of here. So our first chunk, close a file. You have to close a file whenever you are either done writing to it for now, or you're ready to delete it. Every time you want to write a new value to the file, you have to close and delete it because it writes the second line and it only knows how to read the first line. Do you have any questions? Well, like, for one thing, I wouldn't hit the delete button because that would delete all this stuff and that would be ungood. And right. I think that's about it. Okay. And then it finally deletes the file, which lets us write, write it to us again. So here we're going to drag back this little section doodad back into our program. This is our next chunk. We read from the same variable after the changes that happened back here in the loop. The variable was the only thing that changed, so we read from that, say, if we were to add one, would it be greater than five? Hey, wait, we've seen this before back in the forward program. We did the same thing here. If it is, then we just write our file to be 1. This lets it reset itself after all the runs are done. If it isn't, then we do the same calculation as back here, but instead of writing to the variable, we instead write to the file. And then we close our file. So, since we're completely done writing to our file for the rest of the program, we can just we just close it. The reason I do this before I run is so that if the run fails, it's already on the next one. Here, we read from our variable, which didn't change at all here, only the file changed, and then we pl run, plug into our my blocks here at the end with our runs in them. This is just one of them we call endgame. It's big and scary. That's our final run. So... You just plug in, so what you have to do is you highlight, the way you make a my block is you highlight all the stuff you want to make into a my block, come up here to edit, make a new my block, it loads, build, comes to you to this my block builder. You call it whatever you want, we're just gonna, I'm not actually going to make it, I'm just going to run you through the steps. Here's the icon builder. Here's where you can actually build what is shown on the front face. So, here I've made a little snowman-ish. Snowman-ish icon. If you were done, you'd just hit finish and replace this code with your my block. But since I'm not going to make it, I'm just going to close down. Yes? I have a question first. Uh, can you tell our viewers why you would want to use my blocks versus just having lines of code where we would have them? Good question, RJ. Okay, here's what why we do that. Well, A, if you're an FLL team out there, it's great for doing the ch tech judging and you're showing this to one of the tech judges, judges. It's much less big and scary, and you can just explain what the my block does instead of having to explain every block of code and overwhelming the judges. And second, it makes it compile faster. If this this program takes a long time to compile, like sometimes it takes over two minutes to compile. It's that big. 
What? Also, if I remember correctly, if a program is over 60 blocks, then it starts really messing up the program, doesn't um, it? Um, that's sometimes true, especially when you have file access and variables in the same program. So, that's another reason why you want to do it. Plus, they compile as one chunk. So, it, it, it just helps with compile, compile speed and making everybody happy. So, um... That's pretty much it. So, um, if you have any questions, it would be good to put them in the comments. RJ, do you have any questions? Well, I mean, me myself have learned this before, so I already know everything. So I can't really predict everything that viewers may ask. So I would need to say again, please put them in the comments down below because we w you won't have any answers if you don't. So. Yeah, so, um, now I'm going to run over how to change the maximum number of values before we go. So, I'm only going to do it at the end, and I'm going to switch it back after we end the video. But, let's say we instead of six runs, or four runs, actually. So, instead of saying five, we're going to say four. Come on, mouse. Work. Ah! Mouse! Bad boy. Here, you can use the. Okay. Fine, I'll, just, I'll just use the trick. <clears throat> and then we. It does the same calculations here, and then you just have to change the number of possibilities for all the switches and like screen update and the back and the all, only the forward program because the back program doesn't actually change. It's only this value in the forward program that changes. So we're gonna change this to four, and then it's just the changing the amount of things in each of the switches. Back in screen update, and, and in the four, and here, that's just it. But since we have five, we're just going to leave it at five. I'm going to switch these back to five. So, and if you, oh, that was ungood. By the way, if you drag a block out of the sequence beam, it destroys all of the data wires connected to it, which can be pretty annoying, but though it can also be useful if you encounter a data wire error, it's good for deleting them very quickly. So, um, I'm going to show you how to update a program. So, we have three, which is currently empty. How convenient. We're going to come here to our custom palette. This is where your my blocks are stored. It's the third tab, the little two blue bars. Come up here to the one with the little person, badly drawn person, and the two blue bars. These are yours. I have lots. So I made a test. It's marked with an exclamation point. If you were watching closely back earlier in the video, it wasn't one of the options. You get an exclamation point if you don't put any in the block editor. Or in the uh, visual editor. It just sets it as an exclamation mark. So, I just made this as a test. It's three motor blocks that really do nothing. So, we just sli slap it in there and we're done. It now, on the third, times it, third time it goes through, uh, which is labeled truck, I think, it just d runs this test program. That's it. I suppose that is it for now. Like, I, like we said earlier, just leave your questions in the comments if you have any major questions. Do you have anything to add? Well, yeah, just have fun with the info. And I hope this helps any FLL team or singular learners learning about NXTG or robotics or really anything. So, I hope you check out the rest of the videos on this channel. Um, it's based around our FLL season this year. We're an FLL team. This is one of my team members. So, it's been nice talking to you. See you later. So long.